this video, I'm going to discuss in detail whether calisthenics, that is, training with body weight as resistance, is a good way or not to build muscle mass. Before answering this question, let's mention shortly how muscle mass is developed and which factors are critical for its growth. In order to build muscle mass, we have to activate the breakdown of protein by exhausting working muscles during training, which in turn will promote rebuilding of higher amounts of muscle protein through proper nutrition and rest. This is the fundamental principle of all muscle building routines. The highest level of protein breakdown is achieved when training at submaximal intensity, that is, working with reps ranging from 5 to 7 repetition maximum to 10 to 12 repetition maximum, and using loads of 85% of one repetition maximum to 70% of one repetition maximum. So, for example, if the maximum weight you can lift one time only in one given exercise is 100 kilos, you should train between 70 kilos with 10 to 12 reps and 85 kilos with 5 to 7 reps. Now, because your body doesn't really know the difference between resistance coming from a barbell, a weight machine, or your own body weight, any workout that would use submaximal intensity will result in increased muscle mass or hypertrophy. In other words, it's not important the source of resistance we apply to our working muscles as long as we keep within this range of intensity of effort. So, from the point of view of bodybuilding, it doesn't matter if you're doing 10 reps of lat pull down or you're doing 10 pull ups if you want to get a bigger back. Of course, pull ups are superior in terms of functionality and core activation, but this is another story. For bodybuilding purposes only, it doesn't really make a difference. So, the answer is yes. Calisthenics can build muscle mass just like weight training as long as we follow the principle described earlier. However, the upper body and the lower body respond differently to body weight training. The primary function of the upper limbs is to carry and move objects, not to support their own weight. Therefore, exercises using one's own weight as resistance overload the muscles of the upper trunk, both in the pulling and pushing motion, creating an anabolic effect. Most people, if they do multiple sets of dips and pull-ups at a range between 5 and 12 reps, would have their muscles work at sufficient intensity to stimulate growth. And even when we get strong enough to be able to do more than 20 reps in both dips and pull-ups, we can still increase intensity by doing progressively harder versions of these exercises. The lower body, on the other hand, won't get overloaded with just body weight as resistance. The function of the lower limbs is to support our own body weight all the time when we stand, walk, run or climb the stairs. Most people, even absolute beginners, can squat more than 15-20 times. True, we can do one leg squats to increase the load, but still, it wouldn't take much training to exceed the rep range recommended for building mass. So, in order to work at sufficient intensity to stimulate legs hypertrophy, we must use exercises where the loads largely exceed one's body weight, such as squats, deadlifts and leg presses. Calisthenics also includes a lot of exercises that involve isometric contractions, such as the planche, the human flag and the front lever. How effective these exercises or their progression are to build muscle? Isometric contraction can cause enough tension to induce skeletal muscle adaptations that include hypertrophy, although it works mostly for the upper body while the lower body still requires higher loads to get an anabolic response. Success in these skills, however, depends on a key factor. Relative strength. Relative strength is defined as one's strength compared to his or her own body weight. And relative strength decreases as body weight increases. The heavier one person, the lower will be his strength to body weight ratio. This is a general rule. Have a look at this. This graph represents the world records of elite male weightlifters in clean and jerk by their weight classes. As you can see here, as weight class increases, so does the weight lifted, that is the athlete's absolute strength. 
spot. When we compare the strength of the athlete to his body weight, we can see how it drops significantly as weight category increases. The world record in clean and jerk for the 56 kilos weight class is 171 kilos, which is over three times the body weight. While in the super heavy weight category, the world record is a 264 kilos lift for 140 kilos body weight, which is just a 1.8 time ratio. And because an increase in muscle mass equals an increase of total body weight, an excess muscle size can hamper progression in calisthenic skills. One must find the best compromise between muscle size and a body weight that allows optimal body control. All of which raises two important aspects you need to consider when it comes to take on calisthenics seriously. First, you want to build muscle, but what is actually your standard? It might seem a silly question, but in fact not all people agree on the role model as the perfect muscular physique. Is it this? Or maybe this? Which take us to the final point of my analysis, that is, what is your main goal? What is most desirable to you? Is it to be able to do this or is it to look like this? In other words, it is more important to you skills or size. Both are two legitimate goals, but they need two different training strategies. If you go for size and nothing else, a bodybuilding type training using free weights and to a lesser extent machines has time and again proven to be the best. If, on the other hand, you want your body to show great skills and control while still gaining reasonable muscle size, then calisthenics is for you.